Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today we've got a new toy. So, I've been shopping and we've got a Tidal 75 hang on back filter. So today I'm going to give you a bit of a, an unboxing, a review, show you the tank that I'm going to put this in and take you through all the features and see why I think this might be an absolute steal. I mentioned in one of my other videos about my African Congo tank and my Congo biotope and I wasn't quite happy with the filtration for that so I've been perusing the internet looking for a new filter and I came across this and it just seemed like too much of a good deal to pass up on so I will put links down in the description, there'll be affiliate links, I might get a couple of pennies if you use them but a Tidal 75 for less than 50 quid and this is this is cheaper and the same price than other lower rated versions in the range so the title do 50 35 something like that but this is the one that's rated for tanks up to 300 liters which is exactly what i've got 1500 liters per hour uh, is what it's rated at i think this will do the job perfectly so let's get it open the packaging itself is just this box and then it's just in there no other, no polystyrene, no padding, no nothing. It's just the filter, and then the box is empty. So you might think that's good or bad, but it's fine. I mean, it's it's made from quite feels like quite quality plastic, quite tough. Um, so for initial impressions, of the build quality is quite good. I quite like the fact. But it's not too heavy, it's not massively big. Some of the ones that you see where they are rated for larger tanks for hang on back filters are way bigger this way as well as that way, so this isn't too bad. Um, but let's have a look through it. The lid here, this little blue bit here, um, this is for when the it's a maintenance indicator, so it pops up like that when the water starts to flow into like an overflow changer. This just pops up to let you know you need to do some maintenance. It did come with a bag of media and a filter bag, which is really good. I do like my, I do like myself a filter bag. Um, not sure what the media is, but it looks like some kind of pumice. That's fine. And then you've got your media basket here. This neat little trick here is a little clip that holds it in place, which is good because in a lot of my more inferior hang on back filters, one of the things that happens is when they do start to clog or fill up, the whole media basket starts to lift a bit like that, which just reduces the efficiency of it, which isn't brilliant. So you've got this little, just a little slide, locks that in place. And then, once you take it out, you take it out. And this is your media basket. No cartridges, no nonsense slides, no nonsense compartments. It's just a big old basket. So the water comes in through the bottom through a layer of sponge, which is a, a decently thick size of sponge, uh, fairly porous, but you can always add more or less to suit your requirements. And then on top of that, you're open to put in whatever you want. So they have supplied some biological media, but it's a good size that you can add in whatever you want in there. Very happy with that. Some of the dials here, um, I put this on earlier, but this is a little um, turny screw for when you're Attaching it to your tank, instead of getting it to sit like that or like that, you can clamp it in and make sure it sits in the correct orientation. Um, nothing to show you there. The key feature is the pump's here. The pump goes on the inside. This was one of the biggest things that made me want to buy it after I'd seen other people's reviews of it, because the pumps on the water side, quite often they're in here, which means both they take up space that you could be using for more filter media, as well as it makes it hard to start. You quite often find yourself scooping water and trying to get enough water in so it would prime itself. That shouldn't happen with this, but we'll test that later, but it shouldn't happen because this is on the water side, so it just takes it straight in. Um, so, like I say, more space on the inside. Pump on the water side. We've got a control knob up here which controls the flow. And then we've got another control knob down here which controls this little gate. So. If I turn it that way, I open that. If I turn it that way, I close it. And if I close it, that means it's going to use this skimmer. So the water open, the water will go through the intake here. Uh, closed will go through the skimmer. I'm not a massive fan of skimmers, um, especially with planted tanks because it ends up just getting clogged with plants all the time. But it has its uses if you have things like bioflow or some nasty stuff floating on the surface you want to get rid of then it's great that you've got the option there. 
Um, it comes with uh, an intake strainer here, fully adjustable so you can choose the size that you want. Is that quite satisfying noise? It slots over the bottom like so. And then it's also got this, which is a heater guard, not a heater guard, a heater attachment if you want to attach your heater to the side of the filter. Now to me, that looks way too small, but I guess it does stretch. And if you want to use that, you have to take off this bit at the bottom. Then you slide it on here, and then you pop this back on. Fairly, fairly easy. So I like the fact, I like the size, the dimensions are good. It's big enough to cram in a load of media without being too big that it's obtrusive. I'm not a massive fan of the blue. I mean, it looks good here. I think, oh yeah, it's quite stylish. But in your tank, I'm gonna have, I'd prefer if it was all just black, so I might have to paint that or something along those lines. Because that will show in the water and it's just like, oh. Highlighting it, it's like, oh, look at me. And you don't really want your filter doing that. You want your filter to be your, your silent assistant. But other than that, really happy with it. And with the lid on, it's a fairly inobtrusive black box that should do the job. Now the key feature that made me want to buy this, so as I say, I'm going to use this on my Congo Tetra tank. It's a fairly large tank, so I was initially thinking I don't know, I'm a, I'm a flu valve guy, so I was thinking FX4, FX6, something along those lines. £50 versus hundreds of pounds, so immediately I was drawn to this. But the thing that really drew me to this, if I compare this to other filters that I've got in the fish room, the hang on back versions, I've got a few all pond solutions one, but they're all varying um, capacities. But I've got one which I absolutely love because it's cheap as chips and it's, it's very basic and works really well. It's like £16, I'll put some links down and description for that one as well. Um, so setup costs are really low, but it only does 600 litres per hour, 1500 litres per hour. This draws less power. And in today's climate, that's a big deal. Um, I think this is going to end up paying for itself easily um, over the initial outlay and the money that will save in electricity, especially with costs being so high at the moment. And when I was looking at canister filters again, they draw a lot more power need to find a space to put your canister filter, whereas this just hangs on the back, as it would suggest, and draws a lot less power and a lot lower outlay um, to get it up and running. So, like I say, less than 50 quid. Links in description will be affiliate links, though. So, let's take this, uh, go down to the fish room, I'll show you where I'm going to use it, and show you it getting set up. Okay, immediately lost power on my microphone, so we'll just narrate this bit. So this is the Congo Biotope tank. This is quickly becoming one of my favourite tanks. Um, set it up as a kind of darker water, not black water, but it's got Congo Tetras, Alestes Tetras, Delhazy Bankers, Butterfly Fish. Just absolutely loving it. It's constantly on the move, constantly looking fantastic but I guess I would say that so at the moment it's got the the tidal filter I've attached it it's empty it's just in place ready to go on the other side of the tank I've got one of my other all pond solutions filters I think at this point I was explaining to you how I turned everything else off in the fish room so as I could do an audio test and then cocked up the microphone but th these filters themselves these are the all pond solutions one this is the UV one and um, they're not loud, um, but they're not silent either, so there is an audible hum when they're running. And um, This is the other one, this is the one I really like, this is the £16 cheapo one, which is great because it's got big capacity and doesn't cost much, but power is an issue. So those filters, like I say, they do create an audible hum, they're not hugely noisy, but you wouldn't want to have it in a bedroom or something like that, because you can definitely hear um, a bit of a hum from the motor, and the, the one thing that they do do is they rattle, so when things start to go wrong or when they, they need some maintenance, something like that, there's there's definitely a rattle that goes on. But I've got this filter here running on this tank on one side. I'm going to keep it here. I'm going to move over some of the filter media so as I can get the tidal one established as quickly as possible. Um, but it's perfectly fine for an aquarium this size. I've, I've put them on the sides because I want to try and create a bit of a river. So the idea is to have flow from side to side rather than from back to front. 
Um, but as you can see, it's on. It's well, it's not on. It's open, ready to go. I haven't put any media in it at the moment. One of the things they often do with filters when they're rating flow rate is they rate it against the um, the empty filter. So we'll try it like that first and see what it looks like. But excuse Spaghetti Junction, that's another job for another day in the fish room. But we'll get it plugged in and see how the auto priming works. Um, obviously you can't hear this directly but it immediately started drawing in water so I didn't have to do anything uh, it's one of the bugbears of mine is uh, hang on back filters you often have problems if the power goes out for instance they don't automatically restart whereas this one will do just that uh, it'll do it really well so it took a few seconds filled up started flowing in and I was a happy chappy because that's one of the things I like about the fish room is I want it to just run without having to do anything I don't want to have failures where I have to go down and check things and um, so this will be a great addition to this it's not for everyone I mean hang on backs aren't for everyone obviously I compared them to canister filters earlier canister filters do generally hold more media uh, and do better jobs or different jobs than hang on backs but this one will do this tank absolutely fine so this is the flow rate I messed around with it just to see what it was like it's on high and low um, much improved flow as you would imagine over the other ones um, and really helps with the, the ripple effect of the lights I really like these lights, there's a, there's a spotlight on that side um, and you can sort of see it there but the, the ripple effect of the light there looks quite good, the other side of it's just a, a cheapo strip light I shall change that over at some point uh, to have another spotlight because I really like that ripply effect and just think it really looks good so happy with this I think that's doing the job that I want it to do. It's fairly quiet. The only noise I can really hear is the noise of the water. I mean, if I'm completely honest, there is the slightest hum from the motor, but nothing compared to the other two. And you can see the heater clips onto the side quite nicely as well. Managed to get that on. Now we've got the filter filled up with some Biohome Ultimate. Um, I had estimated earlier, I can't remember if I cut it out or not, that it was kind of twice the capacity of the other filter. It might have been an over-exaggeration, I think I've maybe got an extra 50% in there. Um, but still, plenty, plenty media for a tank this size. I mean, more is always better, but there's definitely enough in there. And I haven't noticed it making much of a difference to the flow rate either. Obviously, that might change over time. So if we give it a, a couple of months, see if that gets clogged up any. We'll see if it makes a difference. but. Yeah, it, it's it's running well. Uh, I've more than doubled the amount of uh, filter media I've got running on this tank, which will be good because there's lots of fish in there. O overall, they're quite small fish, but there's lots of them. We've got like 25 Congo tetras, half a dozen Alestes tetras, as well as the, the Bicher. That'll get big and start producing big waste. So I do need good filtration, but really happy with how it's going so far obligatory feeding video as well so these these tetras they're like little mini piranhas at feeding time i absolutely love it I'm feeding them some of my own fish food here this is the super soft artemia i'm mostly feeding this tank a selection of flakes a little a bit of pellets some worms some blood worms a real mix of stuff the fish themselves are doing great the lsds are constantly in and around with the Congo Tetras. They're not seeing any aggression whatsoever in there because there is such a, a good number of them. I think that's really good. The the Delhezi Bicher, he just disappeared. I think he's making a little cave down there now. Um, but he's been trying out various areas. Um, again, he's fine now because he's still quite small. These fish should be fast enough to get away from him for a good long time but I have a few other options to move them to other tanks if it does become an option. So I hope you found some of that information useful I mean to me it's a bit of a no-brainer this thing it costs less than £50 much much lower power consumption than some of my canister filters and things like that, that I've tried in the past and in today's climate with the rising energy prices I think it's a complete no-brainer Hopefully, if it is something that you can use as well, check out the links in the description, go and check it out for yourself. But you could, I think it will pay for itself in no time at all. Um, people are always asking me for ways to make their aquarium cheaper. Lights, filters, anything that's on regularly and consuming power, 
anything you can do to bring that cost down will only be a benefit and make your hobby a bit cheaper and therefore a bit less stressful maybe and hopefully more enjoyable anyway if you enjoyed this type of thing please consider clicking that subscribe button um, and if you want to come and ask me any more questions down in the comments or Friday night 9pm usually do a live stream come and check me out there ask me anything we'll see you then thanks for joining me bye